my life. More love in my heart. The love of God. More of your love, Lord. More of your power. More of you in my life. Take your seat gently in the presence of the Lord. Just give me a little bit of monitor in this mic. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
say, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. Without you, I am nothing. Place your hands across, across your chest and say, Lord, here is my heart.
a mighty hand in this place. Is he wonderful? We greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to give you two scriptures and um, yes, our work never stops. We simply must continue. How many are expecting God to do something for them today? Let me see your hand. I can have the mic. So yes, when I start singing like that, I think we can kill the monitor for this thing. It's There's a place you can get to in worship where immediately you, you reach a spot in heaven. <laughs> and it's difficult to recalibrate when you're coming back from that. You know, I can feel my head a little bit light. But... Um, Without worship, our life is meaningless. If your worship dies, your spiritual life dies. I said, one of the first things the devil gets rid of. I want you to know something. It's a very lonesome, lonely business to say, I did it all by myself. Are you together with me? To say, I, I did it by myself. It's a very lonely business to to not acknowledge God and those he has sent your way. It's lonely business. Tell your neighbor, it's lonely business. It's terrible business. You do your heart an injustice when you think you can manage on your own. Tell your neighbor, I need you. You need me. It's 
very dangerous. One of the first things the enemy will do is eliminate your support system. Your support system is your pillars that uphold you. The church support system. The church is a support system. In fact, all matters concerning Christ, his works, his spirit, his manifestation, his presence, his glory is encapsulated in the church. Jesus is focused on his church. You must understand how big God is. He says the earth is his footstool. So the earth is only big enough for him to put his foot down. One foot. Are we together? So turn to your neighbor and say, his ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. But you can know them by the Spirit. <laughs> Today's message is titled, Prophetic Vision. Prophetic Vision. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, and I will give you two scriptures of reference. One is in Hebrews, one is in the book of Timothy. We will get there now, but I need to lay a foundation. I want you to understand that when, when I'm speaking to you, if I approach you one-on-one, -on -one, hmm, if the Holy Spirit moves me to come and speak to you at any particular time, if he has moved me to come and speak to you at any particular time, it's not, it's not ideas. most probably will rattle everything you ever thought you knew about yourself. And if it doesn't scare you, then it's probably not God. Are we together? I want to share the other side, how prophets work so that you can get the best out of the prophetic ministry. Prophetic ministry is not like pastoral ministry. Are you with me? <laughs> Jesus will help us here. You see, if you come to the prophetic ministry looking for pastoral needs, you may be disappointed because very few prophets, according to the dispensation, very few prophets are trained to lead people into green pastures. Prophets are not necessarily shepherds. Very few prophetic figures, <laughs> very few prophetic figures in the Bible were given the staff. I only know of Moses, whom had a staff. Most prophets walk with a rod. And when, when God wants you to impact or encounter, say encounter. When God wants you to encounter a prophetic situation in your life. If you end up in a prophetic ministry, understand that it, it had very little to do with your ideas. Those were machinations, heavenly maneuvers that persuaded your intellect to come and sit down here. Beyond your understanding. God will normally connect you with a prophet for two reasons. Either there is time for change in your life. One. Two, you are in danger spiritually and you lack the capacity in all your sincerity as a Christian. You lack the capacity and spiritual jurisdiction to handle that demon by yourself. No matter how you may feel that you are versed, you are, have been groomed and well pastured, nothing can prepare you for that mysterious encounter. God sends his prophetic people or ministry to help you engage battle accurately, even for the winning of your own soul. This is why many people I have encountered when we moved to the northern areas, many people I've encountered, I noticed 
the time I had with him was not long. It is either we were to be involved on some level to assist them spiritually or death would occur. And there have been at times where death occurred for numerous reasons. The person that came did not understand that I'm not coming to be fed. I'm coming to a hospital and they're going to put me on a drip because my life is at stake. And you can search your Bible in your free time and check every time God sent a prophet what it was for. Why were the prophets sent? Almost every situation in the Bible we were talking a critical situation. God wanted to bring about a readjustment. God, you see, sometimes your destiny has taken off course. You are walking in the wrong direction. You need prophetic guidance to get you back into where God wants you to be. Whether you come here to be a leader or you come here to sit in that seat, it is divine appointment. It is only, listen, it is only the devil who would tamper with that appointment. It is only the devil who would tamper with that appointment. Say for instance, you came, you were in the worship, you sat, you were ministered to. You go home and all of a sudden, something or someone tells you, never return there again. Don't go to that church. They are doing this and they are doing that. Who sent that one to you? You will find the one that is telling you that stuff has never even set foot here. They heard from another devil. How, how is it that you sat here and you were in the presence of God? You did as you please and you were not harmed. But when you go home and urgency comes, that now you will be in danger if you return again. I'm not saying it's you, but many, we even hear reports. No, I felt that I was not in the right place. I must never return. I said, well, you felt the appointment was of your own accord. This is to do with any prophetic encounter with any prophet of God or any prophetic personality. And God schools these people. They're not people you can sit down and have a chomi chomi conversation with. God schools them to a level where they insist and they are corrective. How you know somebody is a prophet when you have a situation with them, you will always feel that that person is judgmental. You can take your notes if you want. How to know whether somebody may have a prophetic calling or you have encountered a prophetic personality. There's always that sense of there's a standard that must be reached. When, it, when you're in their presence, you just feel, I should behave better. I should pray more. You will even begin to avoid their presence because your, your lifestyle in the week does not meet the benchmark that their life enforces in the heavenly realm. It's not the person. You see, for example, people say a prophet has passed on. Even in death, a prophet is a prophet. Otherwise, the one that touched Elisha's bones would never have gotten up. There are mysteries you need to understand. Now, before I expound too much on that, because it may be heavy on you, we lack knowledge about our destiny. We what? You see, there are things I've been telling you, this is coming, this is coming, this is coming. Prepare for this, prepare for that. You, you write down, you are sincere for a while, but you are like this one that Jesus was talking about in the parables of the sower, where the word comes and you're quick to rejoice when you receive it but when you go home the devil does not you see the devil people think the devil is there to kill steal and destroy their money and their wife and they no he, he steals the word that word you received is the DNA the 
is the potential for you to, to, to facilitate your destiny. The word of God has the creative power of God. It brings into line what God wants you to be, what God wants you to do. So when you receive that word, the devil gets agitated. And he wants it out of you as soon as possible. And the type of demons that we're talking about here are flying devils. They are celestial level demons, principalities that rob you of a simple word you receive. This is why you will find a lot of Christians. They, they are full of the word on Sunday. But you ask them five days down the line. They don't know where the word is gone. And they must have another one the next Sunday. Right. When I look at you, when I look at you, I don't see this one you brought from home that is going through issues. This sister or this brother that is financially unstable, their husband is this, whatever. That's not the one I see. That is why we have been arguing. That is why we cannot have a conversation. Because there's a misconstruing, there's a misconception of the reality. You might look at yourself as, I come from this place and that place. I don't see that. There are many people that have been healed. The only time I notice the crutch is when the person stands up and takes the crutch. I don't see those things. Many times ago, uh, you remember we were in the BNE. Many years ago in the BNE, a woman came forward for prayer. And when she came forward for prayer, I yanked her hand. And then she said, ah! Then when she said that, I saw it was in a cast. I did not see the cast. I saw the cast. And the way, the way it was yanked was so violent that the cast began to come off. So I said, you might as well remove it. And at this time, I'm thinking, Lord, how did you not allow me to see that thing? The cast fell off. She was so shocked and she was expecting pain. But when she clenched her fist, she looked at her daughter and said, <gasps> The pain is gone. But you see, when I looked at her, I didn't see the cause. She was healed instantly. Are you with me? Are you with me? Just, just, just look this way. No one will come here and, and assassinate you. Many of you, I guess maybe you owe some people money and every time somebody walks into the building or you feel somebody is moving, it's like they're going to come and, yeah. This is why we're going to pray today. You'll be free from, from that debt. Amen. Are you with me? So when I, when I look at mama here, when I look at papa here, I see the one God destined. <laughs> and that vision is consistent. This is why when you come to me and you go, <laughs> just pray for me, man of God, please. Just want you to intercede. The reason why I got off WhatsApp, the angel said to me, because of the way that people complain about their problems, they are beginning to convince you that we're not working. So for the sake of the integrity of the ministry on your life, remove yourself. Because we are joining each other in and wallowing in misery. Why, why do you think we have met? <laughs> have we met to discuss your problem? No. We have met to discuss your future. And to remind you of who you are in Christ. Listen. Not to speak a word over you to become who you are to remind you. I'm here to remind you of the champion that you are. I'm here to remind you of the testimonies. And if you look back, you don't need to look back too far to see that there are demons you have come across and you knock them cold. But now there's a new devil and he looks bigger. And you're thinking, can I handle this one? I'm here to remind you that the same God who knocked down that devil is going to knock this devil. And, 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 and I'm here to tell you some of the dynamics and the rules of engagement when you are doing the ascension in the spirit. 
the spirit does not remain the same the spirit is always increasing in glory If you have faith as little as a mustard seed, Jesus said, well, how, in, in the book of Mark, Jesus said, how are we going to compare the kingdom of God? To what shall we compare it with? Then he said, ah, I make the mustard seed. See, when the mustard seed goes in, it goes in tiny little. Your prayer is, when it goes in. Huh? Your faith is, the, when the world comes with their seeds, you, they dig in front of you and they're showing you, yeah, I'm planting, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, yeah. And you can, they, it's fine. And when you come with your seed, it's bloop. But that bloop, over time, <laughs> there's some agricultural background to me. And when I studied the trees on my father's property, I noticed the trees that are not going too far, they grow very quickly. I'll let you sink that in a little bit. <laughs> the tree, the tree, the tree. <laughs> the tree that, 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 that doesn't have much height, it, it, seems, it seems ahead of you. And, 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 and while you are two feet, it reaches four feet in no time. And you begin to wonder, hey, when will I? And, you, and, and, and the mistake some of you have been making, you've been looking at this tree that's four feet, and that's it. And you are 2,5. And four feet is looking at you, and, 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 and the problem is four feet, because he's four feet, he thinks he can teach you. But he doesn't have the authority to teach you because his DNA is four feet. Your DNA is a hundred feet. So if he teaches you anything, he's under teaching you. Because the other 96 is not in him. Oh, oh no. no it's, it's, that's why God sends the prophet. Because the prophet will stand there and say, capacity four feet, capacity hundred feet. And can walk to two and a half feet for now. Say, for now you are two and a half feet. This is not a good friend because they're four feet. They're not, I'm not saying they are a, a bad friend because of character. Some people, listen to what I'm about to say, some people in your life are bad for you because of potential. You, 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 yeah, they just want hand. Brother John, let's, let's just lay a hand and go. There are people in your life because of their thinking and the way they see things is dangerous for you. It's dangerous for your. Some of your destinies are so delicate. That's why when God made you, He programmed your DNA that there are certain people that no matter what you 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 walk into a place, you've never done anything wrong. Your first acquaintance, you, you're already getting attitude. That's Jesus saying, stay off my child. God doesn't even want them to have the privilege of opening their mouth. So there are places you're going to go to and people are going to say, when they do this, you must know, they can tell that's a hundred feet and I'm only 45 feet. How on earth? And, and, and let me tell you something. This is, this is what prophets see. This is what angels see. The angel appeared to Mary and said, you are blessed and highly favored of God. Mary's like, but I'm only <laughs> how can this be? And Gabriel had to say, listen for me, Boki, I stand in the presence of God. In other words, you're telling Mary when they were discussing your destiny, I was there. They didn't just say to me, go and tell Mary she's going to bear you. I was there. He said, I'm not that kind of angel, Mary, that gets sent to the word just as a normal messenger without the knowledge. I'm the angel that stands before God. I'm the angel that stands before God 24-7. It means when, when God was making you, Mary, I saw how he prepared your womb to carry the savior of the world. 
Say to your neighbor, some of your friends are dangerous for your destiny. Let's go a little bit deeper. I want to be careful with this statement because we're talking about prophetic words. Just because somebody was born in the same womb as you doesn't mean that they're going to like you. You see, you see, their kind of love, it, they've got no choice. because you share a mother and a father doesn't mean that you think the same and, 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 and they have their best interest at heart you see there are people who can tell that what you've got is it before you can tell and so they work to discourage you There's something called the fear of others' success. It's a phobia. People can get married and the husband would think, ah, I just married this girl from Galvin. And she can wash dishes and she can cook and she's good at this and good at that. And She's well-spoken and she's attractive. When he's marrying you, it may have absolutely nothing to do with your destiny. And then at a certain point, you explode. And your hubby may begin to experience a little phobia. And start throwing his weight because he can feel your weight. So he's adjusting your weight and, and, and he's not, he, you, you, you see, you're not doing it purposely. It's just who you are. <laughs> if I offend anybody as God blesses me and, 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 and puts me on another level, it's, it's, I'm not doing it intentionally. I, I, I just have to succeed. So your natural course of increase can present a phobia to other people and they start acting funny around you. And if you are married to somebody who is narcissistic, they will try and control the, the, the success to the comfort zone of their level. They're not comfortable when you make big strides because they can't make big strides. Have you ever been in a situation where you and your friends are standing off a cliff and you know you can make that jump and your friend's like, no, you're gonna get hurt. And all of a sudden you're the first one to make the jump and everybody jumps in. <laughs> you took the first step and when everybody gets there, it's a laughing situation. Someone like we were all gonna jump and you're looking around thinking, you're here because I made a move. So there are situations in your life <laughs> where God will bring the whole family to the edge of a cliff. He will bring the whole village, the whole northern areas to the edge of a cliff, the whole PE to the, the whole country to the edge of a cliff two things he wants to do. Number one, he wants to show you your potential because you only discover that you have wings when you jump. Now the others are chickens. They don't have wings. But God wants you to know that, you see, God presents cliffs in the path not to make your life difficult, but to reveal the chickens to you. So before you jump, you're able to tell how many chickens you've got in your life. Chickens are birds, but they don't fly high. And most of the time they fly, it's away from danger. Chickens are birds, but they don't make nests. So just because somebody's got wings, doesn't mean they can fly as high as you. 
just because somebody is called family doesn't mean that they have the capacity to bring you into who you're supposed to be so 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 god in his in his ultimate wisdom and the totality of his excellence can can make your mom only to be a mother cosmetically so so she was only there to bring you to a certain age when you turned 7 there had to be somebody else that you had to go into their care as much as your mother deserves to be with you all that time up until 7 her job was done so you must stop crying for her god gave her up to 7 years just because somebody is called your mother doesn't mean they must carry you all the way just be- <laughs> i said i want to go deeper and i see her i see I'm, 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 i'm kicking mud because if 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 mom overstays her welcome to a certain level she begins to interfere <clears throat> here's the problem mom didn't achieve certain things in her life and she wants to achieve those things in her life in your life so she begins to try and mold you into what she didn't get See she's been around long enough to tell when the turns are taking place. So she sees you making a turn and she thinks, "Listen, in order for you to survive in this world, you must have a degree." <laughs> we 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 blacks and colors have have become very serious about education. Education is an integral part of your child's destiny true but what kind of education you see the other guys across the ocean they don't teach their children what you teach your children they teach them to handle situations they teach them to think outside the box they teach them to become inventive learning 1 plus 1 2 times 2 is not enough if you learn 1 plus 1 2 times 2 that's mainstream that's just a bun of bread but if you're going to get the cream you need to think outside you need to say why is 1 plus 1 2 why and then you need to ask yourself who said 1 plus 1 is 2 then you need to ask yourself another question and say when is 1 plus 1 2 when is it applicable there needs to be a synthesis of different level thoughts many of you have a lovely little diploma a little certificate matric is the biggest deal in our community you don't have a matric you're going to be a nobody what are you going to do with the great then you're going to most weld are you are you with me i'm to, pro, what what is today prophetic vision are you with me can you say with me prophetic vision why why am i saying this the guys that have 24 trucks they have six houses they have jets <laughs> they 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 were not a big deal in school <laughs> but they 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 have another kind of degree and that's the degree to identify resources <laughs> how how funny is this the kid that dropped out of school ends up employing the people that went to the biggest school to come and work for him you not see it's a joke what's the difference between these two one knows who they are the other one is trying to become what they are not isn't it funny the guys that made mathematics were the dropouts the guys that came up with science were the dropouts it means they had to drop out of the education system to make a difference to the education system 
I'm not coming against education, but what am I saying to you? What kind of education? Take some time and look and review what you're teaching your child at the public school and what the other children are learning at the private school. We're not here to talk about children. I'm just, I'm just trying to help you to, to make sure that you can engineer yourself, not to become a hindrance to your child's destiny. Oh, I want to become a doctor. It's great to become a doctor. If that's your calling, it's awesome. But don't force your child to become a doctor. I, I, in my heart, I, I, I marvel at how we are not able to see. I marvel. I mean, have you seen it? Have you noticed the guy that's successful? It's not the doctor. Honestly, I think doctor is a good job. But if your child wants to be a singer, let her sing. If your child wants to be a teacher, let your, let your child teach. What, what they were destined to do is put within them. Now you want to hinder them and make them what you want them to be. This is how we have destroyed our children in the community. This is why our children rebel. And they long for the day they leave your presence. And when they leave your house, they don't want to talk to you again. Because you were pressuring them. I said to my pastor, I said, I want to groom Daniel so that he can take over the business. And she said to me, what if he doesn't want to take over the business? And I said, aha, you have a point. Maybe I'm going to build this business thinking that my children must take over this business. And when I am going to be with the Lord, my children will look at my business and say, I can do better. And if they do that, I will say, yes, you can do better. I'm not the epitome. I want you to take your hand now as we go to the scriptures and say the ceiling is coming off and the mask is falling off. What I'm telling you about has nothing to do with age. If you are in here and you are 60 and your destiny has not rattled yet, it's going to start to rattle now. According to the Bible, life begins at 65. According to the Bible, you start having babies when you're 99. So, so, so stop, stop listening to those people that are saying you are past this. You're off the calendar. Tell them I'm, I'm, I've been off the calendar a long time ago. I have eternal life. My days are without number. Say prophetic vision. Prophetic vision. Prophetic vision. 1 Timothy 1.18 I want everybody to keep this scripture. 1 Timothy 1 verse 18 If you have, you must turn your Bible. Don't be lazy. Today people look at the screen waiting for the verse to appear. Search the scriptures. Are you ready? I want everyone to read. What does it say? This charge I commit unto you or unto thee, son Timothy. What does it say? According which that thou might by them mightest wage a good warfare. When you get a prophetic word, don't dance around and, and record it. You need to weaponize it. Listen, Paul is saying, I am commanding you, my son Timothy. I'm commanding you, according to the prophecy that went before you. The what? There is a prophetic word that went before you. It came forth. Am I right? What are you supposed to do it with it? What is the prophecy for? 
Let's look at verse 19. Maybe you'll make sense of it. One. Holding and a good which what? Some having put away concerning the faith have made a shipwreck. You know how many shipwrecks are in here? The prophetic word put you on sale. You were ready to go. But when you let go of faith, you forgot who you are. You forgot what God said about you. You forgot. It, it did not actualize. And when the devil that comes to rob you of your prophetic word comes, you have no weapon in your hand. You have no what? Because if you hold on to faith and you wage a good warfare, you see, the prophetic word you receive, thus saith the Lord, this is going to be happening, this is who you are, this is what you're going to do, this is your family, God says you should do this and this. You take that item and you make it your forefront. You weaponize and you visualize and you speak it. God says, I am going to become this, then I am going to become this. This is who I am. I receive, I receive. You keep a good conscience. <laughs> and you hold on to faith. Look at your neighbor and say, hold on to faith. <coughs> or you're going to have a shipwreck. Go to Hebrews 10 verse 23. That will shed more light. Hebrews 10 verse 23. There are so many things that were spoken over my life that sounded astronomical. And over the years, I saw them come to pass. God is not a liar, but you can make a shipwreck of what you received by letting go of faith. You drop the master key. What is it saying here? Let us hold fast, what? The profession of our faith. In other words, it says hold fast to the confession of hope. Another translation says hold fast to the confession of hope. For he who promised is faithful. Whoever was writing to the Hebrews was saying, many of you are thinking, maybe it's not going to happen in my time. Maybe God was prophesying to me, but speaking to the children in my womb. If you don't believe it, then how will your children get it? You must be the father of promises in your family. You must be the mother of promises in your family. Now I want to ask you a question. Has anybody here received a prophetic word before? Can you lift your hand if you received a prophetic word before? Whatever it was, lift your hand. A prophet came to you. A prophetess came to you. God can use any, anybody to prophesy. Who received a prophetic word? Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Who received more than one prophetic word? When you receive a thus saith the Lord, Papa, God is going to do this. God is, do, God is going to do that. <clears throat> Brother Tindai, can you come? Tino, sorry, Tino. <laughs> I always confuse him and his wife. Stand here. Face that way. The evil spirits in your life don't know. They don't know anything about your life up until it is declared. So, so, so the enemy might have been waiting for you on this side. Planning to trap you on that side. Then, when the prophetic word comes... Thus saith the Lord. The spirits have a capacity. When the prophetic word comes, it comes with a code. They take that code. Listen to what I'm telling you. They take the code. All of a sudden, this one says, Aha! So he's the one. They take that code and they go and dial it into your star and your star projects on a screen. 
everything that God wrote about you. Before that, before that word was spoken, they had no code. They were just guessing. To, they, they see a hindrance. This is why when Moses appeared and he was hid in a basket, the birth time of Moses, Pharaoh slaughtered so many children. It wasn't Pharaoh. It was the devil. He was thinking he could tell when the prophetic word came out for Moses, he said, he shall lead the people of Israel by deliverance. He will lead them out of slavery, captivity. And Satan thought to himself, maybe this is the Christ. And he could not find Moses. That's why he killed. <laughs> you, see, you see how the devil works? Do you see his limitation? He kills things around you because he can't spot you. When your prophetic word comes forth, then he is able to take a code to get a piece of where you'll be next. This is why, again, another king was born, a savior. And people were able to look at a prophetic writings in the book of Isaiah. They took the code, they put it in the star. I said, this is the star of David. <gasps> this is the star of the coming king. You see, all the news that it's going to be king. And Herod thought to himself, mm, this king, when he spoke to the wise men, they said, oh, this is not just any king. Why are you here, wise men, from the east so far? We've come to see the king of kings. King of kings, I'm a king. And Satan behind Herod, behind the government of that time, he thought to himself, oh, the Christ has appeared. And that's why everyone under the age of two was killed. Because everybody under the age of two, their destiny cannot be read. That is why angels appeared to certain parents and said, the one that is going to come out is going to be like this and this and this. So Satan could tell three years upward what is possibly the process in those kids. But from two years, he couldn't tell. And another reason he did that, through Herod, this evil king could not tell who Christ was. But he knew a king had been born. So if he goes from two years and under, He's going to kill. You're not hearing me. The first two years of you hearing who you are, all hell is going to break loose. The first two years. Very critical time. People around you will die. Because the devils are thinking, oh my word. So the mom and the dad and the sister are surrounding this person. And this person has this prophecy. I can't kill the prophecy, but maybe if I take the mother, I can discourage. Maybe if I remove the employment, I can discourage. Maybe if I tarnish the image, I can discredit. They can't touch that thing. They can only look at it. So they would work around you. But if you are able to stand and wage war with the word that came before and hold fast to the confession of hope, he who promised is faithful. A lot of people came into the ministry, received prophetic words, this is who you are. And they look and say, Amen. You can never live a normal life again after prophetic word. You're not the same anymore. You have been activated. You have been calibrated. And it might not be necessarily a prophetic word where it would just be a touch. And you don't know. You start shaking. What is this happening to me? I don't have this kind of reaction. You have just been activated. The devils, they can see. Plainly speaking, before we pray, we have angels in the room. There are angels behind certain people. And there's a war angels surrounding the building. Beyond 30 meters of that radius, the demons are watching. They use monitors. 
If your level of prayer is very high, their monitor goes into interference. They get so they don't know what's happening. That's why your old aunt suddenly shows up. The one that used to do devilish things that gave you crystals and candles suddenly shows up and says, Hi, how are you? I just thought I'd visit, you know, see how you guys are doing. Exactly, see how you guys are doing. There are certain people who are used as monitors and, and certain earrings and certain makeup and certain objects can be used as monitors because they, there's a magnetic field behind certain objects so they can listen outside and say, Shiro just got a prophetic word that she will be the one to deliver her family. God is going to use her. We can't have that. While you are sleeping, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, you put on your status, prophetic word, I am who God says I am. You are announcing to who? That demon didn't know. Now your enemy, your de- the enemy of your demon says, oh. they, they come to the place. Did you hear about Shiro? There is someone who God is going to use to deliver an entire family? Before, before that four demons met, after that 65 are sitting down. By the time your status spreads, they are saying to themselves, someone who has the potential to deliver a family from God, we can't allow them to be in that office anymore because then everybody there to the number of their family will be delivered. So we need to frustrate them and move them out of that job. That's why after prophetic word, jobless. Pop. Things are going contrary because there is someone fighting against the tide and the force of your prophetic word. It is so potent. By standing still, you are asking for trouble. It is better you never meet a prophet. Going to a prophetic ministry like this one is not a normal Sunday service. That is why so many people, the devil fights. And he, he, there sometimes he lets you come to church. It's not bothered. But when the, 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 the cardinals start moving into place and there's a certain Sunday you're supposed to be there to get the next gem, boop, something will happen. He will send his visitors. And blindly you say, I'm so sorry, man of God, I can't make it. Will it bother me? Will it bother me? Before you know it, that thing that made you miss that Sunday service, it wasn't after making you stay at home. There was a gemstone that was coming to you. The, 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 the machine works of your prophecy. Sometimes God will drop them in three Sundays. But he doesn't want the devil to vex you. So he drops it on Sunday one. You go to church, you go to church, you do quiet but Sunday 15 is the next one Sunday 14 the devil say do you, do you smell something yeah the last time we smelt that he got a blessing Sunday make sure they don't go to church give headache in the morning make the cell phone do this bring the uncle from the other side and that distant cousin we've been holding back for 10 years let's release her now because this is the time she was here there are people in your life that can be used as pawns Wonderful family members can be used as pawns. The devil doesn't care as long as you miss that service. And it's not that you must look at the man of God in the face. As you enter the doors, boop, it's calibrated to level two. Shake your sleeping neighbor, say, neighbor, it's time to pick up the weapon of prophecy. I was telling you God is going to do this with you and he's going to do that with you it was no joke it may be a joke to you but the devils are not laughing it may be trivial to you but it's very serious business when you get a prophetic word to the devils very serious business they will kill everything they can it's time for you to wake up what I'm saying in closing is this you have not come here for a casual visit this is a meeting of destiny stop playing Stop toying. Get serious. You don't know how long this meeting will last. Get what you can while it is still there. Are you together with me? Yeah. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to declare. Can I get some water there? (coughs) 
Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? It's time for us to renew the covenant and remind ourselves of the champion that God said we are. Whatever your prophetic word, if you get a prophetic word today, you must know now it's war. Amen. Say, dear Lord Jesus. You see, what I'm, what I'm doing now is not just the, the congregation alone. Leaders, don't get so caught up in just serving that you're not listening to what I'm, what I'm saying. For you, moreover, twice, moreover. If the prophetic does not manifest in you, it's a shame. All these encounters we've had, all of these encounters we've had, you cannot remain the same. You cannot still have the same tone. Hmm? Are, are you with me? All these, inc- you, can't, you can't still speak the same way. Still have the same attitude. Something's got to change. Like, like uh, Sister Natasha is saying, now something has to break. I wish I could tell you more about the spirit world, but from next week, I'll be talking about how to pray and what happens when you pray. Are we together? Say, Lord, I renew my covenant with you. You're saying that like I'm giving you ABC. Do you know what you're saying? Something in your life, somebody in your life may have to leave because of the renewal of that covenant. Say, I renew my covenant with you, Lord. The weapon you've given me, the prophecy that went before me, I take it and I weaponize it. I want you to spend two minutes, whatever your prophetic word was, speak it over your life. Say, I receive it. God said, I'll be this. I receive it. God said, I receive this. I receive it. Come, pray, pray, pray. Those in the other auditorium, pray the same thing. Can they hear us? Are they able to hear us? Pastor D? Are they able to hear us? Guys, pray. Whatever, whatever God spoke, if you can remember, bring it to remembrance. And ask the Holy Spirit where you are now to bring to remembrance what did he say about you?